Hi, Geo Gypsy here, and I'm going to talk about how I secure my gigantic slide camper onto my pickup truck. I followed all the directions and it still slid off the truck. Feel free to let me know what you do or would do differently in a comment below. Okay, my camper isn't that bad. After getting this new to me camper home, basically tied on with ratchet straps, I researched how to best secure the camper to the truck. My decision was torque lift frame mounted tie downs and spring loaded turnbuckles. A friend put that together for me, and that sort of worked. Because the fifth wheel hitch gets mounted on two rails welded into the truck bed and frame, the gap between those were filled with pieces of plywood to make a nice flat base for the camper. For the next several years, that worked well. The camper came off the truck after winter play to move my fifth wheel and summer home to my seasonal job as a park ranger then camper back on for summer weekends of play. After a couple years of that, I started to pay someone to move the fifth wheel and store it over the winter. That was great because it's really a pain in the butt to put back on the truck. There is very little margin of error between the wheel wells. Fast forward between winter and summer and winter and summer and winter and summer and winter and summer. I awoke one morning in the desert all excited about adding more solar to my camper home. But when I noticed that the camper had slid almost 12 inches towards the back, opening an eye bolt, I freaked out. Oh my God, what to do? I drove to the nearest town of Quartzsite, Arizona, but I just couldn't get my head on straight worrying about the camper breakage. I don't have the upper body strength uh, to simply crank down all the jacks high enough to back up under the camper and lower it back down. It would take me days, uh, maybe weeks. So it was repair or replace. It's a 1996 weekender that had served me well for six winters and many weekends. I couldn't do the necessary repairs myself. Quartzite's a good town for all things RV, buy and sell. But I own this and love all the space and couldn't afford to replace it anyway. Especially during the winter of 2020. When, come to find out, it was valued at three times what I paid for it. Although in a dilemma, I was still thinking solar. So I went to solar bills. Being the end of November was still quite slow and quiet in Quartzite. Bill himself sat outside at a table with me for almost two hours talking about my dilemma. He made a call to a fix-it man about looking at the camper, but we talked solar. I told him I'd done just enough research to know what I might need, hopefully understand the answers to questions, and didn't plan to become a solar tech. I already had 100 watts on the roof, but I needed some more. When he offered an additional 190 watts at a good price, and the clincher that he'd remove and remount it all on a different unit if needed, and for a good deal, I took it. The fix-it man lifted the camper on its own jacks and used some extra stabilization for safety. I moved the truck back under it. His quote for repairs were more than I wanted to spend. I added ratchet straps to help keep it in place and determined to drive even slower with less miles on gravel roads to camp. The truck's not four by four, so I'm already pretty careful. Well, I stewed about it all winter and into summer. And then some friends came to visit me at Bryce Canyon while I was working and decided that two engineers that are retired would make camper repairs. Towards the end of summer, the camper was left at Friends Home in Southwest Utah, and we waited for the hellish summer heat to abate. In the fall after retirement, I hauled the fifth wheel to its new home in Central Arizona. Then I returned to help with camper repairs. All I really did was buy the beer 
a few meals, and hold a board or two. And voila, the camper looked better than new. So off I went for another winter of desert fun. But then it slid again. The problem with this thing is because it is pretty good sized. Is that, because I mean it hangs off about what, two and a half feet. I think off at the back of the truck. So you can see the front has a good angle to pull it forward. But the back really doesn't. And it slides backwards. I mean this is great up here. Looking good, but the whole thing slides backwards. And that's not good because what happens then is that it breaks the camper. It's still sliding. Now, this time it only went back maybe mm, four inches, but that's too much because now the front jack holders are really tight and the back ones are really loose. So, I don't want to break it again. Well, in order to hold that camper back on, it means right now the big heavy straps have to go back on it. So let's see what I can do to tighten this baby back down. I'm not really good at things that require hand-eye coordination or massive amounts of strength. And this has got to now be tightened down as much as I can get it. Oh my lord, I hope that's kind of enough, maybe more. Okay, once again, it's not pretty, but I didn't want to cut the strap, so I wove it around the thing. I don't think I want it flopping like that yet. It's going to have to be better than that. I could replace the strap with long turn buckles, but this works for me and seems to help secure the slide-in camper to my truck. Thanks for following along today.